to me. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. I mean, only 5% of people who set up their own businesses succeed and the rest fail. And therefore, you know, that, that, you know, that, that can be you know, quite painful if, if you haven't got something to fall back on. All of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. After six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was spending all the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. But at the time, we were really scared, like, oh, we're not going to get our degrees, you know, we're going to start this company, it'll be kind of lame. Our parents were all upset, and, you know, there are all sorts of issues, and so... And when I was getting started, you know, with my roommates in, in college, you never think that you could build this company or anything like that, right? Because, I mean, it's just, I mean, we were college students, right? Yeah. And we were just building stuff because we, we thought it was cool. I do, I do remember having these specific conversations with my friends where we thought, you know, someone is going to build this. Someone is going to build something that makes it so that people can stay connected with their friends and their family. But no way would we be the ones who were contributing to kind of leading the whole internet in this direction. I remember thinking I wanted to be an actress and my father saying, no daughter of mine is going to be laying on some casting couch. And my father, for years, I felt such shame about having brought shame to him by having a child out of wedlock that died shortly afterwards, but still the shame of it was there. So when my father said, no daughter of mine is going to be an actress, I just thought, okay, I, I won't be one. Decided to do this, I, I first talked to my, my wife, who is sitting here in the audience, and uh, she had married a uh, you know, relatively stable, goofy, but still relatively stable uh, person working at a Wall Street firm. I worked at a quantitative hedge fund, and uh, this was a hard decision. If you want to project yourself to age 80, and then think back over your life, and, and if, you're, if, you're, if you're 80, what are the, th you want to minimize the number of regrets you have throughout that period of time. I, I, I thought, okay, if I go do this thing and participate in this thing called the internet that I genuinely believe is going to be a big deal, and if I fail, am I going to regret having tried and failed? And I knew the answer to that was no. But I also knew that if I didn't try, that I would always regret that. I would always wonder and it would haunt me. What changes our whole life is action. Why don't we take action? Fear. What do we got to do to get ourselves to do it? We got to make sure that we push ourselves through it by making a decision. The point in which change happens is a decision. Every change in your life that you want will come from something simple, a decision. People go, what does it take to change? Decide. But you go, oh, God sounds so simple and so basic. Was that easy? You'd already have done it, Mr. Robbins. No, it is that easy and you're still not doing it because you are not putting yourself in a state to decide. See, a real decision is not like a preference. It's not like where you say, I'll try it and see. That's not a decision. Decision comes from Latin. It means like incision to cut off from. Decision is when you cut off any possibility except the thing you're committed to. There's two ways of developing entrepreneurial skills. One is get out into the jungle and you give it a go. And you make mistakes along the way. And sometimes you'll make good things. And you might fall flat on your face and you pick yourself up again and you try again until you, su until you succeed. Um, and that's a very good way of, of developing entrepreneurial skills. One of the things that I'd been through as a student uh, was some leadership training. And one of the things they taught us was to, have, uh, to not be afraid of failure you know, and instead to have the goal to fail a lot quickly and then eventually you'll succeed. And I sort of took this to heart and they also had a slogan called Healthy Disregard for the Impossible and they actually made you write down sort of the things you would do that were kind of impossible but you thought you might really accomplish. And that's really stuck with me in, in uh, everything that I've tried to do. And I think, you know, it was very, very close that we wouldn't have started the company. And I think there are many of you out there in sort of similar situations. You know, do you want to take a little bit more risk? Uh, do you want to try something out? And, 
you know, even if you don't succeed, we, we actually tried many things that didn't work. Um, you know, Google happened to work pretty well, uh, but there are many things that we did that didn't, but we don't worry about those, right, because we, we tried many things. So I just encourage you to take a little more risk uh, in life, and I think uh, if you do it often enough, they will really pay off. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards ten years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. When we say hacker, um, there's this whole definition that, that engineers have for themselves where it's very much a compliment when, when you call someone a hacker where to hack something means to build something very quickly, right? In one night, you can sit down and you could churn out a lot of code and at the end you have a product. And uh, I went through a whole bunch of different things and made a list of 20 different products looking for the first best product to sell online. Came up with books for a bunch of reasons, but primarily because books are very unusual in one respect, and that is that there are more of them than there are products of any other category. So there are literally millions of different books in print at any given time, and uh, computers are good at organizing such large selections of products, and, and uh, you could build something online that literally couldn't be built uh, any other way. You couldn't have a physical world bookstore or a paper catalog with millions of different books. Uh, and the primitive technology that was the web in 1994 clearly required that kind of uh, uh, characteristic for a business. It had to be something that could only be done in that way. People doubt that your thoughts create reality for you. It doesn't if you're just sitting around thinking I want something. It doesn't. But there's no question if the energy and the vibrational frequency is correct, is in sync with what is to come your way that there is a space that you create that allows that to happen and nothing more than the color purple explains that to me that is what that's what made a believer out of me and I heard that they were going to be doing a movie about the color purple they was Steven Spielberg and Quincy Jones and as it turns out I start telling everybody I'm gonna be in that movie I'm gonna figure out a way to be in that movie what reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? Find that reason. Because when life had knocked me down, I said, life, I'm doing this because I want to make my mama proud of me. I'm doing this because I want my children to have a better life than what I had. I'm doing this because all my life I've been told I'd be a loser, that I wouldn't make it. All my life I heard people say, let me take them back to the welfare department. I'm doing this to make them a lie. I believe like Frank Tanatra, he said the best revenge in life is massive success. I'm doing this so I can become massively successful. And with that kind of courage, with that kind of affirmation and reason to empower me, I got a saying that when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Steven Spielberg calling to tell me that I hear you had a fat form <laughs> and uh, he said if you lose a pound you could lose this part and I ended up stopping at Dairy Queen to make sure I hadn't lost a pound and uh, the next day I was in his office at Amblin at Universal Studios and got the part. God can dream a bigger dream for me, for you, than you could ever dream for yourself. When you've worked as hard and done as much and strived and tried and given and pled and bargained and hoped, surrender. When you have done all that you can do and there's nothing left for you to do. Give it up. Give it up to that thing that is greater than yourself. And let it then become a part of the flow. And I have never wanted anything 
as badly, as hard, as much as the color purple. And the wanting of it and then the surrendering of it is what taught me how to live in a space of letting go. You can dream this much, but God has a bigger dream. That the color purple is then setting you up for the national Oprah Winfrey show. I didn't know that at the time. So when I ask, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do this? The bigger question is, what would you, God, the universe, have me do? If you're building a business from scratch and you don't have financial backing, you're going to have, uh, the, there's a very thin dividing line between success and failure. And I've come often very, very close to the wrong side of that dividing line. You know, I've had, you know, the bank manager on my doorstep the day after I launched Virgin Atlantic 25 years ago, um, you know, telling me that um, he was going to foreclose on the whole Virgin Group on the Monday morning. This was Friday night, unless um, we, we got him a certain amount of money by the Monday morning. And, uh, and he'd actually walked into my house. It was the first time I've actually pushed somebody out of my house and told him he wasn't welcome in my house. And then I was shaking with uh, anger. And, um, and then as, he, as, he, as I shut the door, wondered whether it was such a good idea pushing the bank manager out of one's door. Um, but anyway, somehow that weekend we managed to uh, scrounge the money together to um, pay the bills. But, you know, building, building a business is perilous. Uh, it's exciting. Um, and, you know, you'll sail close to the wind on occasions. Um, but you learn from, you learn from it. Uh, you know, I was giving myself triple the normal odds. Startup companies are very tricky things. And, uh, you know, fewer than 10% of them actually go on to make any return on investment at all. And so I was giving myself a 30% chance. I was wildly overconfident. But, uh, but things actually worked out. You know, the planets aligned in those early days. And startup companies need early planetary alignment because there are so many things that can go wrong. And when we launched that store in July of 1995, we were shocked at the customer response. Uh, you know, literally in the first 30 days, we had orders from all 50 states and 45 different countries. You're 26 years old. No. You feel old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Running this giant company. Um, it, your personal worth is said to be $6.9 billion. Do you ever just pinch yourself? To ever just say, wow, this happened to me? I mean, it is pretty crazy. Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And one of the things that surprised me, uh, that's a very broad mission. It's a lot of work. We're not going to achieve it anytime soon, right? Uh, it's almost an impossible task. But it's an exciting task and one that you can get other people excited about and they can help you. And one of the things that also surprised me is it's sometimes easier to do something that's harder because other people get excited about it and you can get much more resource. Uh, you can get tremendous resources to solve a hard problem, whereas you might only get minor resources to solve a small problem. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, another company named Pixar, and fell in love with an amazing woman who would become my wife. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. In a remarkable turn of events, Apple bought Next, and I returned to Apple, and the technology we developed at Next is at the heart of Apple's current renaissance. And Lorene and I have a wonderful family together. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometime life, sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. 
And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. Here's the philosophy I've built my life on, my career on. You can have everything in life you want, you'll just help enough other people get what they want. That's true in your personal life, it's true in your family life, it's true in your corporate life.